Hey fam, what's good? Welcome to another video. If we haven't met yet, my name is Ted and I talk bass. This video is brought to you by me and the merch tray below this video and also the PayPal link and the Venmo link below this video. If you find it helpful, feel free to go and buy a product, leave a tip. If you like this content, go on and subscribe to the channel. In the last video, I was talking about going back to basics and I showed you how to play major scales all in first position. Today, I want to talk about triads in first position, but also just triads in general. I think in order, before we get to the instrument, we should talk about triads, what triads are and how they're constructed. And then what we put on the instrument will make a lot more sense. All right. And it'll be a lot more uh, usable for you. So let's get into it. I'm not a keyboard player. I do know how the keyboard works, and I think one of the best things you could do as a bass player, as a musician, period, is know how the keyboard works. The harmony is laid out in a different way on the keyboard than it is on any other instrument. So like, you really have to come to terms with how notes work together. So a triad, three notes. Okay, in order for you to have a chord, you had a the actual chord, you have to have three or more notes, and the basic chord type is a triad. There are four types of triad, triads. There are major triads, augmented triads, there are minor triads, and diminished triads. Okay, and let's talk about how those are built real quick. In this lesson, we're going to talk about major triads, but I just want you to know how how they're constructed. All right. So we stack triads in thirds. If we're in the key of C major, hear all the, the notes of C major. So we're going to go one note, skip a note. Go, we're going up the, the interval of a major third. So we've got a major triad. Now, I'm sorry, uh, a major third between C and E. Now, in between E and G is a minor triad. Now, so we have a major triad, sorry, <laughs> a major third on the bottom, a major third on the bottom, and a minor third on the top. Anytime I talk about top or bottom, I'm talking about pitch. So when I say the top, I'm talking about going that way. On the bottom, I'm talking about going this way. So on the bottom, there's a minor, th I'm sorry, a major third. On the top, there is a minor third. What do I mean by that? Well, if E was my root, there's a minor third. And while we're here, from this note, to this note is a major third. So for major triads, you have a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top, okay? For minor triads, you have a, a minor triad on the bottom and a major third on the top. Now we'll talk about um, different qualities later. For this lesson, again, we're talking about major triads in first position. So um, again, I think doing them in first position and having to you know, play these open strings is sort of a pattern buster, gets you out of you know, thinking about patterns and really gets you thinking more about the sound um, of the chord quality that you're talking about. So here it is on keyboards. That's a major triad, three notes. No matter where you go, you need the interval shape of a major third and a minor third, all right? So doesn't matter what the root note is, that's the pattern, the interval pattern that you need for a major triad. So let's now take that same idea, that same concept, and move it over to the bass. We're gonna start the same way that we did with the major scales, but um, we're just gonna play triads, okay? We're not gonna worry about time or anything like that. We're getting familiar with the neck and 
different ways of approaching this tonality. All right, so let me change the angle and get deep off into it. All right, so we're starting with E. Um, we have open E. A major third away from E is G sharp. A minor third away from G sharp is B. All right, so Now, for this, I'm just going to play, uh, for right now, I'm just going to play um, one, the major third, and the perfect fifth. I didn't explain that on the, on the keyboard, but together we have a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth. The, the B is a perfect fifth away from E, all right? It's a, the B is a minor third away from G sharp. But, um, and I think I said G earlier. I didn't, that, I, I misspoke. So some of you guys are going to catch that. And he didn't know what he's talking about. I do, <laughs> but sometimes I misspeak and that's okay. So E, G sharp, major third, B, perfect fifth. Now the next key, if we're going chromatically, is A. I'm saying hey, I'm misspeaking all over the place. Is F. So we've got F. Open A is the major third away from F. And then C, which is a perfect fifth away from F. So E. F. Now the next key would be G. Damn it, I am just, whoo, it's F sharp. I don't know what I'm thinking, this has been a long day, man. So F sharp or G flat is what I was thinking, right? Now this shape may be one that you're familiar with already. So we've got F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. Notice I moved my hand, right? Every now and again, I'm going to slip and, and do a stretch, but you don't have to do that. So F sharp, A sharp, which is also known as B flat, and C sharp, which is also known as D flat. Why am I not calling them D flat? Because if I call this F sharp, I have to call that A sharp because we don't mix sharps and flats. C sharp, okay? Now, if I wanted to call it G flat, G flat, B flat, D flat, okay, we have to keep them, keep them together. So E, F, G flat or F sharp. Now G, we're gonna play like this: G, B, and then open D. Again, we're trying to get, we're trying to break the, the habits of relying on just shapes. We want to have the shape of the sound as well. Then we've got G sharp or A flat. From there, we've got open A. That open A is going to look the same way as E did. Then B flat or A sharp. B. C. C sharp or D flat. staying in this position now let's talk about challenging ourselves a little bit and playing all of the notes in the triad that are available to us because we already played 
we already played F there. So let's look at F below the low F and play all of the notes of the triad, not the seventh chord, but the triad, the major triad. So we've got... Sorry, I've missed the A. If we do that same thing with G, sharp, uh, F sharp, or G flat. flat or G sharp. Now watch this one. Here's our root, major third, perfect fifth, and then our root again. So now we have our A, A starting with the open string. A, C sharp is the major third, perfect fifth is E. There's A. Now, do we have anything below that open A string that is a part of that triad? Yes, we do. We've got E. So, A, C sharp, E, A, E, C sharp, A, E is a part of that triad. And then A again. Let's go to A sharp or B flat. is a part of that B flat chord. It's the fifth. So we have the, the fifth below the root. For B, five, one. For C, So if you were playing a five string, that C sharp or that D flat would be right here. And you would have the D flat, F, uh, A flat, D flat, F, A flat right there. There's that triad there. So some of this stuff, I'm, you know, as I'm, I'm telling you, I'm having to think about it again, um, because after a while, you, you kind of, you kind of, you know, space out on it and don't think about it as much. But there it is. So we stopped at D, D flat or C sharp. So we've got D, F sharp, A, F sharp, D. What other notes are part of that chord, that triad, that are below this D string? So let's think about it. There's D, F sharp, and A. I'm giving you the thought process now, right? If, if, if I'm thinking about it, here's my D, F sharp, A, and I'm like, whoa, well, is there an F sharp? Is there, is there a lower F sharp? Yeah, so that must be in there. Is there an A? Yes, there is. There's an A. So D. Those, there's the, those open strings. Right? So yes, it's good that there's a little bit of thought that needs to go into it, that you're thinking about it a little bit. That's good. Um, so here's E flat, root, major third, perfect fifth. 
fifth, major third, root, where's the fifth, below, and then here's our major third again. So you're using all of this stuff again to um, break out of patterns a bit. Um, those are all of the triads, the major triads in first position. You know, people will say that most of the money is made on this part of the neck, and that's partly true, but uh, music happens all over the instrument, right? Um, so knowing each part of the instrument, I think taking a, a, system, a systematic approach to learning each section of the instrument can't be a bad thing. So try it out. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. If, if you found this helpful, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and uh, I think you'll, you'll find some benefit of it. Um, there's definitely ways to play along the neck uh, and, and really be into patterns and stuff like that. I play by patterns quite a bit. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's also an added benefit of being able to just understand the sounds and take, take things out of context and play around with them a bit. So anyway, I hope you dug the video. Like it if you like it. And uh, check out one of the other videos on this channel. And I will see you next time. As always, peace, two fingers. Now the next key would be G. Damn it.